When you start talking about plant genetics, it really is all about sex. Hi, I'm Ed Buckler. I'm a USDA ARS scientist stationed here at Cornell University. And we've become specialists in changing and regulating when plant sex can happen and between who. There's not a major plant that hasn't been domesticated and genetically modified by people. 10,000 years ago, people in central Mexico began the domestication process of maize choosing the plants that they liked the best, bringing them back to their campsite, and the ones they liked, they kept on growing. They were the first geneticists, making selections based on the genes that were present in one variety versus another, and deciding which ones to plant the next generation. And that's essentially what we as geneticists and breeders do today. Here at Cornell, there's a group of scientists figuring out the basis of why corn varieties differ across the world. We now have these incredible tools to look at DNA. The genome of maize is about two and a half billion base pairs in size, and we're figuring out how each base is important for making a plant productive and also trying to make it more nutritional. And so what we're doing is we're putting together those little sections of the DNA by breeding them that allow us to produce very productive crops one may be adapted to the U.S. and another one will be adapted to various portions in Africa. Through very skillful breeding and much better agronomic practice in the last century, we've increased the yield of maize eightfold. But we haven't seen those gains in the developing world. Crop yields have just marginally increased over that period of time. The environments are very different across Africa, and so unique crops need to be developed for each of those regions. For example, cassava, Cassava is one of the most productive crops in the tropics, and it is at the basis of food security for people throughout Africa. But it hasn't been bred as effectively as crops like maize have. Farmers are super important, but you need a Ugandan scientist who says, look, I've looked at this thing, and this is good for our country. I'm Alfred Ozimata from Uganda. The long-term breeding objective of cassava is the basic thing, which is food security and then they're able to even produce surplus. So that means they can go into commercializing it. People get out of their poverty, and eventually they have a better standard of living. It starts with cassava. We have a tremendous opportunity here to apply these advanced tools to take this incredible crop, cassava, and move it in the same way we've moved crops like maize.